Welcome to the Polgar Chess University. In this lesson, I'd like to focus on some important chess tactical ideas. They'll vary from forks to discoveries or trapping a piece and more. Let's get started with our very first example. Here we are. What do we see in the current position? Well, we're in an endgame, or at least very close to it, obviously the queens are already gone. And uh, even though there are still quite a few pieces on the board, I would call it an endgame, where white has an extra pawn. Other than pawns, we can see each side having all the rooks on the board, a pair of bishops, and a pair of knights. In the meantime, the white pawn on f4 is under heavy attack both by the black rook as well as the knight from h5. The good news is it is white's turn, so white can do something about it. However, considering the fact that the pawn is attacked by two different pieces, chances are we may not be able to protect it directly in one move enough times. However, there are situations when we can counterattack or take advantage of some other issue in the opponent's position. In this case, Black's problem is that a knight on h5, yes, that very same knight, which is attacking our pawn on f4, is, first of all, on the edge of the board, and second of all, it's on an unprotected square. We can see that, potentially, white may create a fork by moving the bishop to f7 and attacking the black rook on e8 as well as the knight on h5. However, coming to f7 right away with the bishop would be a serious error, even though if the black rook would capture the bishop, then of course things would work beautifully, as now the black rook is hanging on e8. The problem is that after the direct and immediate bishop f7, black right now would respond by an intermediate move, first exchanging the rooks on e1 and with a check, and when the pawn captures back, only then capture white's bishop on f7, and of course black would have gained a piece on this deal. The good news is in this position for white that white starting out with the correct order of moves, white will come out a piece ahead. And here it's really important to trade the rooks for white first before black would get that same opportunity as we saw in the last variation. Black obviously would capture back not to remain a rook down and now already we can see how that same idea works out beautifully for white attacking the rook on e8 as well as the knight on h5 all at once. Unfortunately for black, the rook is unable to go to e5 from where it would protect the knight on h5. Moreover, it would attack the knight on c5 as well. Of course, it has a major problem, namely that the white pawn on f4 would simply capture it. However, black found a tricky idea, or at least at first so it may seem, by moving the rook to f8, attacking the bishop, and then when the bishop captures knight, to make a fork with rook f5. This almost saves the day for black. However, almost doesn't really count in chess, just like in life. And here the problem is that now black has another unprotected piece, and moreover white right now is able to play bishop g4, which creates really a skewer 
So if now rook captures the knight, the bishop captures the bishop, and white is a piece of hat. Okay, let's move on to our next example, which will be dealing with a different pattern. In this last example, we dealt with fork, and now we're moving on to a discovery. The position we see on the board has been reached in a game in just 10 moves along the game in a, from a French defense, and it was White's turn. And here it's really, really important to point out the fact that White's next move will be a check. And of course, the other key element right now is the fact that the black bishop on b7 is on an unprotected square. Well, with all these hints, hopefully you already have the answer, and namely that white should capture knight takes bishop on f6. It's a check. Don't forget if it wouldn't be a check, or for example, the black king would be on h8 in the corner and not on g8 where it is right now. In that case, the black bishop would capture white's bishop on g2 and be just fine, in fact, doing very well. However, our reality right now is that black is in a check and therefore black's best option is to just recapture with the queen and in that case white will simply capture the bishop on b7, which doesn't just win the bishop, but also traps the rook in the corner. And in this situation, the best black can do is not to lose the rook in the corner for free, but at least be ready that after when the white bishop right now captures the rook in the corner, the rook will capture white's bishop there. Nevertheless, after bishop takes rook and rook takes bishop, white now is a full rook ahead which is obviously a tremendously big advantage for white. Let's move on to see a yet other tactical element in the next example. In the situation we see in front of us, it is black's turn. The key issue right now is that if black would capture white's rook right away with the pawn, that would be a huge blunder because white would also capture black's rook and it wouldn't be only capturing the rook but in reality it would win the game for white right away because of black's back rank problem so this is certainly something not to do for black so we are back to the starting position and while black may be better with various choices of moves but there is one specific move that immediately gains material for black and I suggest you spend a few minutes and try to figure out yourself what that special move may be well in this situation what we see is that the white rook is already under attack and moreover, it hardly has any squares to move to. In fact, it has only one square. If the rook would need to move at the moment, that same rook could move only to e2. But at the moment, it is black's turn, so therefore white does not have the time to do so. So here, the key answer is to protect black's rook that's right now is on an unprotected square. As we already learned, if now the black pawn captures white's rook, that means that white will get the opportunity to capture black's rook on c8 and will get checkmated. So here the key solution is to protect the rook on c8 on the unprotected square and at the same time take away from the white rook the last square of escape and that move is to move the queen back to a6 a very smart move 
accomplishes two goals all at once. It covers the e2 square as well as protects the rook on c8. And the poor white rook is all trapped right now. In order not to lose the rook in its entirety, the best white can do is move the rook to c2, not that it's such a great choice, but relatively the best, and now black is ready to capture it, black already won an exchange, and after queen took bishop, black played queen a3. Certainly a smart move, with the idea to next get the queen to b2. As we know, when we are ahead material, like black is here, being up an exchange, generally our next goal should be to trade pieces, and especially queens. And black is doing exactly just that. White continued with knight e1 in the game, and black as planned got the queen to b2, and white felt it's time to resign. Of course, at the beginner level, you may want to play out even a position like this because let your opponent prove that he knows the technique how to win. Of course, generally it's best to avoid getting into such position with white because against a good player this would be a loss 100 out of 100 times. Let's see the next example which has a number of interesting situations in it. In this position it is white's move and we can see that the black rook right now is attacking white's queen so white needs to do something about it. One of the things you may notice is that white can capture the black rook on f6 because of an existing pin along the g-file. But there is another big problem with that. And it's very important to always, always be aware of different checking opponents of your own, but just as well your opponent. And in this case, that will result a big tragedy for white in that the black bishop has the opportunity to move to d5, which is a check, and at the same time opens up a discovery, an attack on white's queen, and basically white is lost right now. So that's no good. Okay, so it's very important always to understand that why certain moves, natural moves, may not work. So now that we know that capture is not good, the queen basically needs to retreat. The question is where to go. The game continued with the white queen returning to d4. And then black responded by bishop capturing on h5 and black equalized the material and eventually won the game because of the safer position of the black king. So let's go back one more time and look at this position what may be a better option than of course taking the rook or even retreating to d4 as white did in the actual game. The best option right now for white is to play queen e7. Now what's important to understand is that if the black rook would move to e8 which seems like it pretty much traps the white queen. In reality, it does not trap it at all. In fact, the rook e8 move would be an outright blunder, because now white would be ready to capture black's rook, as the check on d5 would be a simple check and nothing more, as the white king would just move out of the check and the black rook is no longer on f8 to attack white's queen. So let's go back one more time and look at the position after queen e7. If on the other hand black would try to attack the queen from the other side, then white would have two options. 
the better one being to retreat the queen to h4, protecting the pawn on h5, and then if black captures the pawn on c5, then continue the attack with queen g4, threatening to checkmate right away on g7. The other option, which looks rather fancy, it's very elegant, but not as good as the queen retreat. Another option would be to play knight g6. This looks like a tricky move. And indeed, if the rook captures the queen, things work out well, because the knight captures the rook with a check, and on the following move will capture the queen. However, black can do better in this case. After knight g6, black would be capturing the white rook on e1, queen e1, and then move queen c6, and black would be certainly in the game. Okay, let's move on to our next example. Here we go. Okay. Now, in this position, again, we need to figure out what may be the key tactical element. And in this case, it is the discovery. It's important to notice what we see along this diagonal. Namely, if this pawn from e5 would get the opportunity to move forward, that would look real good because it would open up the queen's attack on the black king and the pawn from e6 would attack black's bishop. Well, that kind of gives away the answer, which is to sacrifice the knight. So this is a very typical little combination when one side makes a short-term combination to win a minimal material. Now, if, as in the game, black does not capture the knight, then the knight if needs to, can simply move away on the next move, perhaps to a nice outpost on f6, and be a pawn ahead. On the other hand, of course, as of every sacrifice, the test is what if they accept it. In that case, white indeed is ready to advance the pawn forward, give a discovered check, and then next capture the black bishop, in this case with another check, and white's attack is absolutely overwhelming with the black king being right in the middle of the board. Right now white has doubled up attacking black's knight on c6. If that knight moves away the white rook is ready to get into c7 and checkmate black's king real quick. And sadly for black protecting the knight with the rook wouldn't be a great idea either because that would allow for white to capture that pawn on f7. And let's move on to our next example. In this position, which by the way was played by Alakine on the black side, it was his turn. And now the big question is what to do. At the moment we have material balance, but the black bishop is hanging. The beautiful part is that black actually can win the game here right away. Partly because white has a back rank problem. And because of that, black has a very nice little combination, namely playing bishop takes pawn on d4 check. Now, the situation is that the white king is in check and the black queen also attacks the white queen. So moving out of the check certainly is no help because black will just grab the queen. On the other hand, if white captures back on d4 with the rook, which white did in the game and which seemingly looks good because it protects white's queen as well, now comes the problem that the black rook will capture on d4. And now if queen captures, then queen checkmates right away. On the other hand, if the white queen does not capture the rook, then black simply is up an exchange and a pawn. So therefore, white resigned here. 
As I keep saying all the time, it's always extremely important to be aware of the options to check or capture something. Let's move on to our next example. Here we go. In this situation, it is obviously white turn. We can definitely know that for a fact because white is in a check. And whoever is in check is always the side that is about to move. In this case, there are only two reasonable looking moves, and that is to block the check on f3, either with the knight or with the queen. In either case, one would protect the other. You can also notice that at the moment white is up an entire knight. So therefore white is ahead in material and it's in his interest trying to exchange pieces and especially queens. And that explains why it's such a better choice to right now block the check with the queen which white did in the game and then won soon after winning the pawn on e3. On the other hand, it would not be such a good choice to block the check with white's knight because then that knight would remain on a very unpleasant pin and the black pawn would get to advance further to e2 with the threat to then simply move the rook to e3 and attack the pinned knight a second time. So remember, when you're ahead in material, and you have the opportunity to exchange queens or at least to offer it without any immediate tactical loss, generally that's the better way to go. Another hint is that it's rarely a good idea to voluntarily step into a pin. And let's move on. Here we go. This is another example from one of Alakine's games. It is black's turn in this position, and Alakine was black, and it was time for another little combination. Black may be better in any case, but finding the correct move, the game ends real quick. We can notice that the white queen is far away from the king's side, and oftentimes that can be punished. Here, amazingly, despite the fact that the white king seems to be in a safe position in the corner, the white king will get in real trouble very soon. And the elegant combination is to right now capture the white bishop. As we already learned, if a sacrifice is not being accepted, generally that simply means that that side just won some material, like here. If right now white would try to make an intermediate check to bring the queen back to defense, the problem is black will not move out of the check, but instead will block it with the bishop and counterattacking the white queen, the same queen that just gave the check. So, after rook captures f3, let's see what happens if white captures with the rook. Well, then again, the problem is the back rank, that the black queen just appears on d1, and white can only delay checkmate by one move. And finally, what would happen if white right now captures back with the pawn? Well, then there is no back rank problem, very true, but the queen will simply occupy the second rank with a deadly checkmate threat that, in essence, there is no defense against. A very nice little combination, giving black the winning attack. And finally, here is our last example for this lesson. Here we are. We can see that white has some space advantage on the queen side, a beautiful outpost for the knight on c5, However, we also see that black is developing some attack on the other side of the board. The problem is black is a bit too slow. White arrives first. And here the elegant combination was started by 
white playing knight to d7. Now on one hand, white is attacking black's rook on f6, but perhaps most importantly, white has opened up the c file, which is rather important because, for example, if the black rook would capture the knight, white's queen immediately would come down to c8, giving a check, and then on the next move, just grab the rook, and then of course, white would have simply won an exchange. On the other hand, if in this position black would move the rook away, then the white queen comes in with a very quick and strong attack, followed by knight check. As you can see, white is following up each time with a forceful move, king e7, and the checks follow with more and more white pieces getting into the game. And the checkmate comes with queen f7. Well, I hope you learned some new tactical ideas and enjoy this lesson. Thanks so much for listening and so long until next time. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.